Hi, and welcome back to Living with a Classic. Today, we're in a workshop with the 1991 Geagra XJS V12 convertible, and it's time to change the spark plug. Here are the plugs I'll be using. There are uh, original Jaguar plugs, part number EBC4021. It's a pack of 12, and I got them from SNG Barrett's. There'll be a link down below where you can get them as well. If you have a HEV12, these are the correct ones. These are the tools you'll need to change the spark plugs. Uh, a good socket set with uh, various size sockets and some extensions. You'll also need a special socket, a 16 millimeter spark plug socket. This is smaller than a lot of other spark plugs, so make sure you have the right one. A um, couple screwdrivers, a long breaker bar just in case one of the spark plugs is just really stuck in there, especially ones up front tend to stick in case they haven't been changed in a long time. A um, couple pliers, or just a plier is really good. Uh, this tool is optional, but it helps a lot to get those spark plug boots off without damaging them. And then this will be shown later, but a piece of very special Jaguar V12 wood. When you first look at the HE V12, you can't even see the plugs. They're all the way down here. See, there's one. And yeah, there's one right behind there. All the way up here, six on each side. So actually step one in removing the spark plugs is removing the belt for the AC compressor and undoing the four bolts that holds it in. With the cruise control out of the way, we can start to see the distributor cap and the plugs. Now it's time to remove the compressor. There are two bolts to hold in the back down there, and there are two up front. And you can kind of see one there, and there's another one on the other side. With the front bolts removed, the AC compressor is now completely loose and it can be moved around a bit later so we can get to the front plugs. The next step is to remove all of the HT leads uh, from their plugs and to remove the distributor cap to get some more room. When removing the HT leads, I like to use a uh, special tool for this. It's a plier just made to remove uh, hoses or uh, HC leads. So you take the tool and you grab on to the lead pretty far down and just gently pull and there it comes off. Now I just do that 11 more times. To gain more access to the rear plugs, I like to remove the throttle pedestal. It's just held in place with a couple bolts which have already loosened and you can pretty simply remove it. You'll get a lot more access to these plugs and the risk of damaging the plugs and the threads is greatly diminished if you remove this. With all of those parts removed, you now have access to the plugs. You'll have no problem getting a socket on there. And also you have no problems putting in the new plugs again. 
Uh, but before you start doing any of that, I recommend that you get a vacuum cleaner and just vacuum out all the debris down here. There's always some type of dirt down here. If you have some leaks, there'll be oil. Just make sure it's really clean before you start removing the plugs. Uh, some people use compressed air, but that just really blows the dirt around. I think it's a lot better just to get in there with a vacuum cleaner and simply get it all out. With any loose debris vacuumed away, I actually also took a rag and just some light degreaser and got rid of any loose dirt or oil that was here and here. It wasn't really like puddles of oil or anything, but just a bunch of dust and some oil particles all put together. Since this part of the engine gets really hot, it's also known as Death Valley, I thought having this area clean would just help the engine cool better. I wasn't going for concourse quality or anything, but just cleaning it up nicely. So now I'm going to get a uh, spark plug socket and some extension. I'm going to start to remove these 10 plugs you can see here. And then a bit after that, we're going to get the two plugs up there. Like I said before, these plugs use a uh, smaller uh, socket. It's a uh, 16 millimeter spark plug socket. And so if you don't have one, make sure you have one before you start. It's not the same as the larger socket for a lot of older cars. So now it's just a matter of getting in here and seeing if these crack loose. All right, here's the first one. Alright, so now the first 10 spark plugs have been taken out. All of them came out really well, and they all actually look not that bad. Here they are. Uh, so this is the driver's side, and that's the passenger side. And they all have about the same color. They're all... It's only these two that are a little, little bit darker. Uh, but the car has also just been idling around a lot lately because uh, this winter I moved so the car just drove here and then it was just moved around a bunch just finding out where I was going to put it for the winter so um, basically not the best way to read spark plugs but that they all look pretty even that they all came out that's a really good thing and they're also the same that are going in so that feels really good as well here are all the 12 spark plugs now before you install them in the car it's very important to check the gap the electro gap, which is see right here. You see the opening in between there? That should be on the HE engine 0 0.025 inches or about 0 0.6 millimeters. So you get a feeler gauge and the correct size and simply check that it fits snugly in there. And I'll just do that on all 12 of them. Okay, so that was really easy. They've all come actually pre-gapped. I'm not sure if it was done by NGK or if SNG Barrett's have gapped them, but that's really great. But still, always double check because that's one of the most important things in your ignition system besides ignition timing is the correct gapping of your spark plugs. Since these cars are pretty famous for having spark plugs that get stuck, I'm going to put the smallest, smallest amount of anti-seize on them just uh, right here on top and just lightly, lightly smear it all the way around. Basically just the smallest amount, just to help the next time when I take them out. Now that there's a tiny bit of anti-seize on all of them, we can start to uh, thread them back into the car gently by hand. So it'll just basically be methodical and just make sure not to cross thread them. Just take them all in really, really carefully like so by hand. 
and don't force them at all. If you feel any slight hesitation, just back off, pull it out, and just make sure you're putting it in the right weight. But this one is just it's going in really nicely, especially with that anti seize on. So now I'm just going to do this with uh, all 10 of those, and then we're going to torque them up. So now we have 10 new spark plugs in place, and they're all tightened up. But this being a V12, there are two more. And they are right down there, and same on the other side. Uh, so now I'm going to um, get the uh, socket set out again, and we're going to gently lift up the compressor, which is already loose, and get those two out. Remember that I said that you need a custom piece of Jaguar V12 wood? Well, now we're using it to prop up the AC uh, compressor to get to these plugs down here. Uh, I've already pre-loosened them just a little bit, so I should be able to get them out with one hand. Uh, these plugs are sometimes actually not changed on these cars. It's not at all uncommon to find that they're a completely different make or just that you can see that they have a lot more miles on them. A lot of mechanics just don't want to change them. But you can kind of understand why. I mean, having to remove part of the AC system to do it is a little odd. So there's that one. And here's the last one. Now we can thread in the last plugs. And the last one. Now we have a Jaguar V12 with 12 shiny new spark plugs. And a little bit of a cleaner engine as well. So now it's just a matter of lowering down that AC compressor carefully. It's really heavy. And putting everything else back together. And now with everything back in, once again, you can't see the spark plugs at all. Just make sure to uh, plug all the electrical connections back in, like the ones up here by the cruise control, the different position sensors over here, and that one over there. All in all, I would give this about a seven out of 10 in difficulty level, because it's really not difficult. It's just rather time consuming. If this is the first time that you're doing this, I would budget for about six to eight hours to change all these plugs. Uh, the more you do, of course, the faster you'll get, but I say about six to eight hours if you do this method where you remove everything in the middle, which I actually think is the best method. There are shortcuts where you keep things in place, but the risk of damaging things, uh, is just, it gets higher. And when you do this, you can actually clean out things. You can clean out connectors and you can just have a look around and make sure everything else looks all right. And that's how you change spark plugs on the Jaguar XJS V12 Procedure is also the same for the XJ12 with the HE engine. If you found this video useful, please hit that like button and share this video with your friends. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Thursdays when I work on cars and other things automotive related. Until next time, I'm Adam and this was Living with a Classic. See you soon.